So in a recent video, we talked about the chassis on the S650. And as we all know, it's basically an S550 with a couple small upgrades. But in their case, that's a good thing because that means we have plenty of parts to choose from to upgrade the suspension on our 2024 GT. And today we're gonna to start by lowering this car with a set of Acelotec lowering springs. Our Acelotec springs were very popular with the S550 crowd and we expect them to be just as popular with the S650. These are a very low priced replacement spring. and gonna work fine with your factory shocks and your factory struts. They'll be direct replacements, include new bump stops and new boots for the struts, and then give you about an inch and a half drop all the way around, which keeps that slight factory rake, brings the car much closer to the ground, provides better handling and much better looks. Before we jump into the installation video, if you have any questions about the tools we're using, check out cjponyparts.com forward slash tools or click the link up in the corner for a free exclusive PDF and video showing you the tools you should have in your toolbox and how to safely and properly use them. So we're going to begin the installation up here in the engine bay. We're going to remove the bolt, well, two of the bolts that hold the strut to the strut tower and loosen up the third. Got one, two, three. So we're going to remove this one, remove this one, loosen this one. Now we can move underneath. So the wheel well, first thing we're gonna do is remove the brake caliper. There's gonna be two bolts on the back, one here, one down here. They'd be hard for the camera to see. We're gonna bolt that, put the caliper aside. I get the lower bolt finger type, but leave it in. Then we can remove the top. Now, once they're both hand tight, remove both bolts and put the caliper aside, usually over on the K-member. And we can pop the rotor off and put that aside as well. Okay, with the brakes out of the way, now we can remove the sway bar end link and put a wrench on the back side to hold it and then remove the nut. Now remove the end link. You gotta push down a little bit on the sway bar, but it'll pop out. Before you remove the bolts that hold the strut to the spindle, you want to pop off these little clips for the ABS line so you don't damage it. There's one there, and one right down here. Hold that aside. Now, if you've ever done an S550, you remember these nuts and bolts. These are spline bolts that hold the spindle to our strut. What you're going to do is loosen both nuts. One you can't see, it's hidden down here. The other one's right here. Loosen the nut and thread it out past the end of this bolt, but don't remove it, as we're gonna have to hammer on this side to get these bolts to come out. But if you just start hammering on this, you'll mushroom it and won't go back together. So again, make sure the nut is past the end and hammer the nut, not the bolt. And thread it past the end. Same thing on the bottom. Now, if you need to take out some frustration, now's the time to do it, because basically you're gonna hit these and hammer them until this side comes out and the nut goes flush with the side of the strut. At that point, we're gonna bolt them and they'll come right out. But again, these are splined. Some cars, they're very tight. Some cars, they're not so bad. I've had other ones I've had to wail on with a sledgehammer. There's no, there's no consistency to it, but at this point, hammer these out. I can actually work the bolts out. It's kind of shimmy it a little bit. Now grab the strut, remove the hand tight bolt from the engine bay and remove the strut assembly. Do the same thing on the passenger side. So once we have our strut assembly off the car and on the table, now we have to compress the spring so we can remove it. Now you probably don't have a spring compressor. You will need one for this part of the installation. Now there are less expensive versions of this one available. This one's around 300 bucks or so, but a lot of auto parts stores will rent these. So if you wanna do this at home, just make sure you have one of these in advance. Okay. 
Okay, with the spring compressed, we're gonna pop off the strut mount. Sometimes that will spin. Just wanna hold the strut then, and we're just gonna put a towel over it here and grab a set of pliers. And now we'll decompress the spring. Now we can compress our Celtech spring to install it on our car. Now these are lowering springs, so they're definitely not as tall. You don't need quite as much compression. Before we install the Celtech spring, you want to remove the factory bump stop, replace it with the provided one. You can see different height difference because of the lowered car. Install the boot as well. All right, we're gonna put this together now. You wanna make sure the spring, when the strut is sitting this way, the strut facing up, the wording is facing the right direction up. It's not upside down. That'll make sure you have it seated in the right spot. the lower part of the coil, just put it right where the isolator is going to be. Spring compressed, reinstall the nut. Just make sure you got a bunch of threads in there, we will tighten it down later, but now we can decompress the spring. Get that tight and try to go back on the car. Okay, now we'll take our new assembly here. We're gonna put it up into place. Loosely install a couple nuts just to hold it. All right, so now basically it's the exact opposite of taking it apart. First thing we do, connect our strut to our spindle. If you remember, we hammered these out because they are splined. You can put the nuts on and just draw them through. I have to give them a, just a little tap or two to get them started, just makes it easier. Then we'll install the nuts and tighten them down. Okay, we ran them down with the impact. Now we will torque them to spec 185 foot pound. Okay, with the strut to spindle tight, now we can actually tighten the strut mounts. These will get torqued down to 46 foot pound. Get our ABS wire now reconnected. One little plug there and one down here on the side. Okay, we'll reconnect our sway bar. This might fight you a little bit getting through here. Put the wrench on the back, tighten her down. And then we'll grab our torque wrench again. Okay, and then 76 foot-pound on this. Okay, now we can reinstall our rotor and our caliper. As always, throw one lug nut on here and hold it, make it easier to line up your caliper. Both of them started by hand before you try to tighten them down. Okay, now caliper to spindle torque spec, 85 foot pound. Okay, passenger side's done. You're gonna repeat the process on the driver's side. Now we can move on to the rears. 
Okay, we moved on to the rears. Now the rears are not quite as involved as the fronts are. We basically have to do though is lower the subframe down so make sure you have a way to do that. First thing we're gonna do though, is remove the brake caliper hose bracket here, the upper mounts for the shock, and the ABS line. Pop this out, and these bolts are next. Now to remove our shock, we're gonna remove these two bolts down here. Okay, to remove the rear spring, we have to lower the subframe down. So you start, these two front bolts here for this bracket, and then we'll remove this. Before you do this though, make sure you support the subframe with a jack. Okay, now we get the rear subframe bolt. Now carefully lower your jack to lower the subframe. Since we're doing one side at a time, the subframe should have no problem staying centered. And once you do springs, you probably wouldn't get an alignment anyway. Okay, grab our cell tech spring. Make sure again, the wording is facing upward. Grab the isolator for the top. You'll see there's a little stop on there. Make sure that goes up against the end of the coil. When you put the rear spring in, just be careful of the bottom here, the end of the coil. There's actually a pocket in the lower control arm where this sits, and that will go up against the stop that's built into the control arm. Fine, because we're lower here, this goes into place much, much easier. Make sure both ends of the coils are seated properly. Jack the subframe back into place. Okay, we're gonna reinstall the subframe bolts now. Definitely start them by hand, make sure they're centered. Come back and torque them later. Same thing with the front one, get it started by hand. Okay, start by torquing the smaller bolts, 41 foot-pound. And the larger subframe bolts to 129. Okay, before the shock can go back on, we have to swap in the shorter bump stop. Pop this cap off here. Move the nut. You may have to hold this. Sometimes it comes off, sometimes it doesn't. Push this through out of the boot. Here you can see height difference. Seat the new one and reinstall. Shock mount back on and we'll tighten it down. Reinstall the cap, ready to go back on the car. Put our shock back in place and reinstall the factory bolts. the shock underneath the two alignment studs, reinstall the bolts, and then we'll torque everything down. All right, 66 foot-pound for the top, 35 for the bottom. Reinstall the brake line. Then 
don't forget to reinstall the little clip for the ABS. Repeat the process on the other side and your installation is finished. I think we'd all agree that any car looks better lowered and the S650 is no different. The Acelotec springs fit great and give the car that stance we were looking for. Next step up is definitely though some new wheels. As far as the installation goes, typical lowering springs for that S550, S650 chassis. Give yourself about three hours or so, you'll be back on the road in no time.